The persistent state attribute in .NET 10 in Blazor is a really big deal. You already saw it in Blazor server, right? On my channel, you saw the video, right? Well, let me give you a quick recap. So what you see on my screen here is the typical weather page. When I reload this page, you see this typical flash when you still have pre-rendering enabled, meaning you have, in this case, interactive server render mode. And let me do this one more time. I refresh the page. We see a little flash. Let's do this again. The temperature changes, temperature changes to, it was now 23. Then we have the loading text again, and then 33. I think you get the idea. Now, the solution before was just disable pre-rendering or using a complicated way for persistent state. Now, with .NET 10, you have the other option here. The real solution, which is simply using this attribute, attribute persistent state, you can still see render mode, interactive server, no pre-rendering disabled, it is there. And when I now restart the application and now reload the page, you don't have any kind of flash. SEO search engine optimization still works. The only issue is when you use enhanced navigation, I go to counter and then back to weather, then you still have that flash. But for these details, maybe just watch my Blazor server video about that. By the way, if any of my videos have ever helped you, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel. It really helps me keep making these tutorials, which in turn might help you becoming a better .NET developer. So please hit subscribe, it is free. Thank you so much. And if you wanna get the source code of this tutorial together with a comprehensive written tutorial, I've got a new Substack newsletter. Link, as always, in the video description below. Now, the bigger question is, what about Blazor WebAssembly? Because in my opinion, this is now an even bigger deal, a really, really big deal when you are a Blazor developer and use Blazor WebAssembly as your interactive render mode from time to time. So for that, I have this other project here and I wanted something more exciting than just the weather forecast. So what you see here, great name, right? Blazor App 3. I was playing around here and what you can see first is the model I wanted to use is simply a product. So this is more like a shop, let's say, done with Blazor. We have our server project. So I really use the Blazor web app template here from Visual Studio, in this case, 2026 Insiders and the release candidate one of .NET 10. I have a products model. I have a product service to get random products. Here's the implementation. Then we have the product controller. You can get the complete code in the uh, video description below. So just check it out. There you will also find a complete written tutorial about that if you need a bit more time, want to play around with that by yourself now. And then the thing is that I want to use this, of course, on my client. So not on a Blazor or not using Blazor server this time this shall be done with WebAssembly. And as you can see here, I have the interactive WebAssembly render mode here. If the products are null, then we see loading products, no products available if they count as zero, otherwise we just see them. And add to cart is a little function that will just write something into the console. So as you can see here, I also already have persistent state here and I will get to the attribute and what it is doing in a minute. But for now, let me just remove this, and then you see that if the products are null, and this is important, otherwise it won't work with the new attribute, right? Also, when you play around with the weather forecast, make sure to have this little if statement in there, otherwise you always get new data, but here you can check if I already have some data, and this is what persistent state then knows, I have data, I have a state, right? Then don't do that, I already have it, so let's use this data. Anyways, what you want to do in this case here is making a call to the API, right? And getting the data from there. Now, the thing is, I have to mention that with interactive WebAssembly, when pre-rendering is enabled, what you then do is the pre-render part also runs this whole page and also wants to do an API call. So you need some kind of server implementation anyways, right? And this is confusing for most Blazor developers or if you start with Blazor. So you had two opt or you still have two options. How would you do that? Well, let me show you here now in the Solution Explorer. Since .NET 8, since the render modes, one option was an 
also actually before if you wanted to, you could create another class library project, which is your shared project. And you put then an interface there. And maybe if you want, I can make another uh, a video, an updated video about that as well. Just tell me in the comments, please. And please subscribe so you know when this video is there. And you have this interface then for a service for, in this case, the product service in this shared project, right? But then for the implementations, you need one service implementation on the client and one on the server. You register the interface, great, using dependency injection and stuff. And then the implementation is a different one on the client here, as you can see here in the program CS, right? So far here, we only have the HTTP client because this is all we need. But if you would use a separate service and an interface for that, then you would register probably also as a scoped service, the product service <clears throat> in there and use a service implementation, the implementation then is in the client, right? So interface in the shared project, implementation in the client. This service then in the client would make an HTTP call. But on the server, you actually don't need to call your own API, right? So what you can do there is what the product controller is doing, you would also move that into a separate service, as you can see here, right? And then in that uh, service, you have this logic here to get your random products. But the server don't has to use an API call, of course, because, well, you're already on the server, right? You don't need to call the server again. You have it already. So if you, for instance, use Entity Framework, stuff like that, right? You can directly use your repository service or Entity Framework itself already, stuff like that. But now for a simpler example, I hope you are still with me and not confused. For a simpler example, let's just say you register the HTTP client here as well, all right? And then we just make a call, okay? So this is strange, maybe it, well, it uh, is maybe, or leads maybe to a tiny bit worse performance. I think it's not that big that you have to wait then, not, not that much time. But anyways, this uh, still works. So this is one solution. And now comes the most exciting part. You will see this in the developer console, what's actually going on there. So let me run this real quick. <laughs> Long story, I know. But sometimes you have to explain stuff. Something is very wrong today. I don't know what why it is trying to start this thing here on uh, port 5000. Because, oh yeah, I see it. Uh, set as data project. This is important. Something uh, went wrong here. So let me just close this one. Restart again. Now we're talking. Okay, now let's go to the HTTPS version, please. There we are. So we see the weather loading and so on. And did not change anything here. And you see that it is using stream rendering. So completely different story. This is how it looks in the default example. But now regarding the shop. So what's going on here? See that it is loading. We see prices. It is then doing its magic again. And then we see different prices, right? Because we have random items like health potions, steel shield, iron sword, you know, stuff you need from time to time. And then you also have random prices, random items, random prices. And this randomness helps us to see what's actually going on there. Now let's open the developer console. And now in here, what you will see, this is important, the network tab, right? When I now reload the page, there's a lot happening. So with pre-rendering enabled, you see any crawler, any search engine optimization, uh, any search engine can read this stuff, right? If I would disable pre-rendering, pre -rendering, I would not see that. So this is bad, okay? And performance actually is also a bit worse because actually we already have the data, so we can give it to the client during hydration, meaning just, uh, yeah, remember, or starting all that interactivity then on the client, right? So again, we have data on the server, we have HTML generated, we move this to the uh, client, the client can display this thing, but then the client thinks, wait, I want to have this data as well, but new and fresh. So let's do this one more time. And this is what you actually see there. This is all the pre-rendering stuff, right? And this is why we also need two implementations in essence. Now, what we can do is using the persistent state attributes because you see here we have data, 
But then when I filter this, we also have this web API call. So this is the second version you see here on the page. So let's go back to Visual Studio now. There it is. And we go to our page, the products page. And here now, I just add persistent states. Okay, brand new stuff, .NET 10, release candidate one. I still have pre-rendering enabled. I save this, restart the application. It is reloading. Saw that already? You saw actually nothing, right? Let me just reload this again, like that. You see the prices are different, but we have no flickering, no flash, nothing like that. And we even have no API call. And this is the exciting part, right? Let me do this one more time. See that? And when I uh, now don't filter at all and go back to the beginning here, we see the products and they match, the prices match the ones I see on the page, right? It wasn't the case before. So this is very, very important. And actually, in my opinion, a really, really big deal because you have the data on the server already, then the state is given to the client. You don't need that call. You don't have to make this call. Now, when you are, of course, inside the, uh, the actual application, you do something here, then you see it in the console. And if you want to, let's say, I don't know, add it to the card and then make your or implement your logic to really add it into a database card, something like that, right? Then you would see the call here, of course, but it's only done once, all right? So this is important. This is really for the situations when you load a page, you have this strange effect uh, that you have this flash, you already got the data actually, or you calculated the data, you got it from the server, but then WebAssembly thinks I need to do this again. All right, so this is persistent state in Blazor WebAssembly. Server is another topic. Check out my other video about that, please. And if you have any questions, put them into the comments. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Take care.